Hey guys, this is John Cornell, manager of the developer engagement team here at Genesis Cloud, and I'm here with the Dev Drop for April 2022. So today's Dev Drop is going to cover how to send in an automated fashion or an, uh, what we'll call an agentless, agentless fashion, an SMS message from Genesis Cloud. Now, while it's conceptually pretty easy to send an SMS message, there's a couple of things in Genesis Cloud that when you're first trying to figure this out, can be a little bit tricky or aren't necessarily called out clearly when you take a look, uh, when you first start working with it. So in order to send an SMS message uh, using our API in Genesis Cloud, you have to have two things. First of all, you have to purchase an SMS number from Genesis Cloud that uh, you're going to use to send your SMS messages from. You just can't use any SMS enabled phone number. It has to be purchased from Genesis Cloud. Second, because the SMS API was designed to be agentless and be executed without a user context, you have to have uh, an OAuth client credential grant set up, an OAuth client set up, and execute that API call underneath that OAuth client. If you try to do it directly using like API Explorer, or if you try to use like a code grant with a user context, uh, the call is going to fail. So to get things set up first, I just want to quick walk through a couple of things that can trip people up a little bit. If you've got a brand new Genesis Cloud org and you've never set up an SMS phone number, uh, you might come out to admin and go, okay, well, I'm going to look for where I can purchase an SMS number. Now, if your account doesn't have permissions to purchase an SMS number, it won't even show up in the menu. So in order to get your account set up, you have to go out to roles and you have to pick a role that you have permissions uh, that are, is associated with you, you're basically going to go out, you're going to add permissions. And in this case, this role already has SMS permissions, but you type in SMS and then you can go and set the permissions to be able to purchase a number, add, delete, update, view, whatever. In this case, since I'm the administrator of this org, I'm going to have all of the permissions. So once I have that set up, then what I can do is I can go out to SMS number inventory and I can purchase a number. And I have an SMS number already purchased. This number will only work when it's originating from my Genesis Cloud org. But to purchase a number, you can actually go out and purchase it. And you can select the number. You know, It can be local, mobile, total three, phone number, uh, region, short code, all that good stuff. And you set that, and that will get you to that first part where you need to have a uh, Genesis Cloud SMS number. So um, once you go out there, you can go out to our API Explorer and actually look at the endpoints. So let's go to developer.genesis.cloud and we're gonna go into our API Explorer. And our API uh, is actually underneath the Conversations API and it's called Conversation Messages Agentless. Nowhere in any of that description is like, hey, here's how you send an SMS message. And there's two reasons for that. One it's assumed that this is going to be agentless, that you're not going to be doing this from any kind of user context. And two, Genesis Cloud with this endpoint actually provides you the ability to support three different protocols. One, you can send an SMS message uh, using the SMS protocol. You can send a message using WhatsApp if you have a WhatsApp integration, or you can also send a message uh, using the open messaging API. So we're going to only in this video talk about sending a message via SMS. But let's just take a look at what some of the parameters and what's going on here. So if I go out and look at the messaging body, we're going to have a from address, and that is going to be the SMS phone number that you're actually sending numbers from. And it's going to be in an E164 format. So for instance, in the US, it would be plus one, your area code for the phone number you purchased, and then your phone number with no hyphens or anything else in it. It's going to have a to address, which is a target E164 phone number you're going to send messages to. You're going to have the message type, in which case we're going to send SMS. And then you're, we're going to have text body, which is going to be the actual text message. Now, you have other parameters if you're using WhatsApp and if you're going to want to use an existing active conversation. We're not going to do that for this uh, uh, demonstration. Now, since we're running through an OAuth client, I can't execute this call directly from API Explorer. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Genesis Cloud CLI I'm going to execute this endpoint using my Genesis Cloud CLI, which is already set up with uh, an OAuth client. So let's go out there. I'm going to bring up a terminal. You can see some of my earlier attempts at this. 
And um, basically the command that I'm going to use to send my message is GC conversations messages agent list create passing in a file name with a JSON body of the data that I want to pass off uh, to the underlying endpoint. So what I'm going to do is let's take a look at this test.json. And in that test.json, just like we saw in the API Explorer, we have uh, the from with an SMS purchase number from Genesis Cloud. We have the two. Both these phone numbers have to be e.164. We have the message type, and then we have the text body. So if I execute this guy and I basically pass in the test.json, I am going to be able to see the end results of what's happened. And I've created a brand new conversation ID out here. SMS message, it shows you all the existing text, uh, the text body and all that good stuff. All right, so the two most common scenarios that I see often we run into uh, using this API is if you're doing some backend automation, maybe you need to text some people based on a predefined list or a set of activity going on. So you write a little Python script, you write a little shell script, whatever, to call this endpoint using an OAuth client credential. Another common use case I see of this is when you want to make and send an SMS message from some kind of architect flow, whether it's directly in a call flow or an architect workflow. So what you can do is you can call our public API using from a flow using a data action. So I'm gonna walk through a scenario. I'm actually working on a blueprint right now. It's kind of a cool one that basically sets up a scenario where if you've got a customer who says, I want somebody from your company to call me at this time and that agent calls them, if the customer is not there, we want the agent to basically wrap up and say customer unavailable. And that should trigger a workflow then that will, an architect that will basically go out and send an SMS message to the customer that says, hey, thank you for reaching out to us. We're sorry you couldn't get a hold of us. Uh, we couldn't get a hold of you. Please call back to this phone number and you get a phone number in the text body to schedule a further appointment. So if we go out here to architect, uh, to the admin console, I'm just gonna preview guys uh, give you guys a preview of this. Uh, this will be coming out in a blueprint in the next couple of weeks. Um, but basically I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go workflow. And I've got my agent SMS trigger workflow. And you can see in here that using our process automation uh, feature, which is currently in beta, but it's going to be released hopefully soon. I can basically listen for conversations that have a certain wrap up code and then trigger this workflow. So let's go out, I'm gonna edit this just so you can see this a little bit bigger and I can zoom in on this. All right. So in here, uh, let me see if I can zoom. All right. You can see that we're getting some information coming in off the workflow, but then once we get that information, like the conversation ID and the phone number we wanna call back to, we're gonna call a data action. And that data action is going to take a from and a to, and then also the text body. And underneath the covers, that data action is calling our public API. It's calling that agentless API that we just showed you in API Explorer and the CLI. So this agentless SMS uh, data action can basically be found underneath our integrations and, and actions. So we're gonna go to action. Let's make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. I'm gonna type SMS and I created a data action out here. And if you go out and I'm looking at this, you can see I have a configuration out to my agentless environment. And then I've built a request body in my data action to basically fill in the APIs and the endpoints that are provided. Now you don't have to come up with this all on your own. Uh, we've actually got a repository, our Genesis Cloud DevOps repository, where we have an example of this data action available. So if you go out to our GitHub account under github.com slash Genesis Cloud DevOps, let me start from the beginning here. You can see that we have several different uh, Terraform modules out there that help remote modules that you can reference in your own Terraform projects. So for instance, if you're using Terraform and CX's code, you can actually pull the creation of this data action directly into your um, CX's code module and be able to use it right there. Now, if you're not using CX's code, we also did include the actual JSON that you can use to import it into Genesis Cloud. 
Now, if you've never done an import export, I can come out here to actions, right? And I can go SMS and I can import an action. All right, so I can come in here and I can import and browse. So I could set up like a, a shell called send SMS and then I could come out here and I could take that JSON file that I just had out there and import it. So this is a really, really cool and powerful feature because there are several times in the course of building out flows, you're gonna to wanna to call our public API. And by using these exported files or by using our CI CD pipeline, our, excuse me, our Terraform remote modules, it becomes very easy to just kind of grab this without having to go through all the pain of reverse engineering. Okay, here's what the body looks like and here's how I'm gonna set up my body template, all that good stuff. All right, you guys, so that's the end of this dev drop. I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, I know that this was probably one of the first things I ever tried to get working within Genesis Cloud and I tripped and stumbled over it. So um, I, I built this specifically for that reason. I'd love to hear additional feedback. So if you have feedback on the video or on topics that you would be interested in seeing, uh, please drop them in the comment section of the where this YouTube video is posted or please post them out in the developer forum. We have a lot of people that read our developer forum and often go out there and answer questions. So thanks a lot, everybody, and have a great rest of the day.